separate neural network for classifying the images and one for colorizing them. The fusion part is when we unify <laughs> My name is Jordan J. Lloyd, and I take memories of the past and make an authentic version of it. What you're trying to do is piece together what's going on in this photograph at the time it was taken. So the more visual information there is in a photograph, the longer it will take. And that involves digitally painting dozens, if not hundreds, or even thousands of individual layers of color onto that photograph. I always record my process from start to finish, from the moment I receive it, cleaning up all the way through, adding all those references and tying in all the color at the end. And that soon starts generating literally hundreds of gigabytes of video footage. Ultimately, when I'm dealing with people's memories, when I'm dealing with these really, really valuable historical archive material that could be lost to time, it's very reassuring to know that I've got a backup solution that isn't going to fail. It means digging through diaries and memoirs, government records, old advertisements, and even consulting historical experts to be sure that the colors and styles of the time are faithfully represented. A good colorizer has a good network of people to call, call on. We had one guy, he's like a specialist in ethnographic dress. He was showing me like museum grade samples and you know, he lives and breathes this stuff. So like every single little detail, like, you know, like the color of beads on like a Laplander necklace or something, you know, it's really <laughs> this is going to be the exact thing. Take this photo series of Tutankhamun's tomb, which was discovered by Howard Carter in 1922. Jordan colorized these images based on the archaeologist's detailed handwritten notes, and by cross-referencing his journals with restored artifacts on display at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, he was able to recreate what that day looked like almost a hundred years ago. 